Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the Iowa Senate, Senate Resolution 15 sends a strong message to Representative Paul Ryan and the supporters of the plan to gut the health care safety net for millions of Americans and thousands of Iowans, known as Medicare and Medicaid. We reject this approach because it shifts costs, does nothing to encourage better outcomes, and leaves the middle class and those who aspire to the middle class holding the bill, literally. It's the same old voucher ideas from the past. So long, sorry, see you later, you're on your own. All it does is build in a hidden government subsidy for health care providers with no accountability for the public money. Senate Resolution 15 covers only a few of the reasons we oppose this short-sighted approach. In plain language, here's what the resolution before you says. The plan adopted by the House of Representatives, House Concurrent Resolution 34, Chairman Ryan's plan, changes the rules of the game by creating a two-tier benefit system that pits one generation of Americans against another. It uses a discredited voucher idea to mask the real problem, a health care system whose costs are the highest in the world. It forces senior citizens, the middle class, and those who aspire to the middle class, and disabled Iowans and Americans to pay for higher health care costs rather than reforming health care in America. It does this through out-of-pocket cost schemes and squeezing Iowans with health care inflation costs that are much higher than inflation in general. This will eventually price them out of health care and result in more uninsured and underinsured Americans and Iowans. It does nothing to bend the cost curve or to rein in costs. It makes the Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage donut hole a permanent black hole of costs for senior citizens. It capitates Medicaid payments by block granting the money, turning it from a state and federal partnership to a Potemkin Village policy, making it appear to be an improvement when the outcome is just the opposite. The Ryan Plan all but makes the hope of health care access for millions of Americans and thousands of Iowans a pipe dream. And finally, here in Iowa, since many of our Medicaid beneficiaries are at the same time our most frail, elderly, and disabled in nursing homes and care facilities, the burden of this proposal would be borne by them, the least among us, the ones we should be standing up for, Mr. President. It's no wonder Newt Gingrich called the Ryan Plan both radical and right-wing social engineering. Mr. President, that concludes my opening remarks. I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Chairman, sure. return to the Senator from Black Hawk, Senator Dan Nelson, for final remarks on Senate Resolution Number 15. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, a couple of responses to Senator Zahn's comments. First of all, this resolution has been public and available since we voted on it in the well last week. It's not a difficult read. My opening comments actually, in layman's term, described it paragraph by paragraph. This weekend, I even posted on Facebook that we would have this debate. Gave people an opportunity to share their thoughts. Some liked it, some didn't. So I appreciate your sense of emotion and passion. But this is important to Iowa. The U.S. House of Representatives has already passed this plan. 
It is under consideration in the Senate and could, in a few short weeks, month perhaps, find its way to the President's desk. So I think Iowans deserve a chance to have their voice heard on this issue. Let me explain why this resolution matters to Iowans. First, for decades, we fought together, Mr. President, as Republicans and Democrats to bring Iowa up from the bottom for Medicare reimbursements, provider reimbursements that go to our hospitals, our doctors, our health care providers. We were dead last in the country in reimbursements. Finally, we were able to get Washington to listen. And in the Affordable Care Act, that reimbursement was changed, making our reimbursements both fair because they rewarded efficiency and effectiveness, something Iowans are very proud of, rather than punishing us. So any changes to Medicare or Medicaid matter to Iowans. Second, we have the highest percentage of citizens over the age of 85 than any other state. And we're near the top in those citizens who are over 65. No state, Mr. President, is more impacted by changes with these two programs than Iowa. We have an obligation to speak on their behalf. Third, the Medicaid proposal alone puts in jeopardy, in jeopardy our children's health care plan. We were able to develop a public-private partnership that ensured virtually every Iowa child could see a doctor. That's something worth fighting for. Finally, many of our Medicaid beneficiaries are both poor, frail, and elderly and disabled Iowans who, through no fault of their own, are either in a nursing home or a care facility. They are the very people we should be looking out for, not looking down on. Shifting the burden to them for the high cost of health care is just plain wrong. Let me finish by making it very clear about what this policy choice is about. It was the moneyed class that caused the Great Recession, fueling a housing bubble with fast money and speculation, not the middle class. It was the failed fiscal policies of the Bush administration, tax expenditures that rewarded the money changers rather than working families, two wars that weren't paid for, a lack of investment in education and innovation that caused the Great Recession, not the middle class. It was a failure to meaningfully reform health care for more than 30 years that made our health care system the most expensive on the planet, not the middle class, Mr. President. In Iowa, we're not going to shift the blame or the burden to our senior citizens, the middle class, and those who aspire to the middle class, or our disabled citizens. This is about economic security for those who have earned it, and for those who, no fault of their own, might slip through the cracks. Mr. President, it's with great pride that I move Senate Resolution 15 and ask for a record roll call vote.